Hey GarageBand users, welcome to the studio. My name is Dean and today I'm showing you more than 25 advanced tips, hacks, and features that you can use to up your GarageBand game. And I'm gonna be sharing these advanced tips in three different categories as you would use them in real time. So we'll start in the recording realm, we'll move on to editing, and then finish with mixing. So without further ado, let's jump into our first section of advanced tips. First, we're gonna look at tips in the area of recording. Did you know that there's something called the cycle region, which you can turn on by clicking up top and dragging through a few bars. And whenever you hit play on your project, it will actually loop back around to the beginning of this region when it hits the end of that region. Now, why would that be helpful in the context of recording? Well, if you start recording while the cycle region is on, it will actually loop that several bar section over and over, and you can sing multiple vocal takes at one time, and GarageBand captures all of those. And then when you're done recording your different takes, you can come down to this number here and actually listen back to the different takes and basically audition which take that you like best and then leave the others behind. Now, beyond the cycle region, there's some very handy shortcuts that you can use while recording. The first is simply hitting R to start your recording, then hitting the space bar to stop your recording. Then if you didn't like the recording, hit Command Z to undo it, and then you can actually navigate to go forward or back one bar, and then you can hit R and start recording all over again. This is really helpful because it means that you're not attached to your mouse or your desk. You can actually take your keyboard with you and record from anywhere in the room without having to touch your mouse. Then once you're done recording, our next tip is, did you know that you can rename and customize your track header? So instead of audio one, I can call it lead one. Then I can go over here, right click and choose a customize icon. It just helps keep your song organized when you have tons of tracks. The first advanced tip for recording with software instruments is hitting Command K on your keyboard to bring up what's called the musical typing feature, which allows you to control and record software instruments using your typing keyboard. But more than just the keyboard itself, have you noticed some of the advanced features that you can use, like the pitch bend and the sustain pedal? Another cool feature when recording software instruments is the ability to overdub, which means that you can record right on top of an existing MIDI performance and add in a new part right on top. This could be really helpful if you're trying to come up with a complex key line or maybe a drum performance and you can't quite play it all at one time. Well, that's okay. You can record over it again and then put the whole performance together into one take. The next two advanced tips I wanna show you when recording software instruments start by hitting B on your typing keyboard. And the first tip on this menu is, did you know that you can actually shape and change the sound of your software instruments any way you want? You can start with this transform pad, which comes on a lot of synths. You can also hit the controls tab and see a lot more parameters that you can shape and change. Now in reality, I usually keep these stock in the same, but if you are advanced at shaping sound and you want the power to do it, then you have it here in GarageBand. The second thing that I wanna show you in this menu is the arpeggiator. <laughs> the what? It's this button over here, and when you click it, it'll turn a normally static note into a beating note. Let me show you what I mean. which can have a really cool effect, especially in a song like this. And you're burning like a fire, you are only so bright. I'm blinded by the light. Next, I wanna show you three powerful recording tools within the guitar track. Did you know that you have a built-in tuner which allows you to tune your guitar inside of GarageBand and never unplug? Super handy. Next, let's talk about the Amp Simulator. This is crazy. If you hit this button right here, it opens up your amp, cab, and mic settings, which you can change entirely. Change the amp, change the head, change the cabinet, change the position of the microphone. I mean, it is crazy how many options you have. Then lastly, I wanna show you the pedal board, which you can click on here, and it brings up your pedal board and it will show you what pedals you're currently using, what parameters they're set at, and allows you to then change the parameters in here or even add totally new pedals to the mix. Now again, I'll say that I typically go with the presets, but if you wanna make some major adjustments, you have the power to do it. I wanna share one last advanced recording tip, and that's how to multi-track record in GarageBand. 
To do that, you simply right click on any track header and then click configure track header. Next, you'll hit the record and enable button and then you simply record and enable any tracks that you wanna to record together at the same time. So you can record a guitar and a vocal at the same time, a vocal and a piano at the same time. It's really, really cool. And before we get into editing, I'm gonna show you a few tips that have to do with your overall project. To change the tempo of your song, you simply go up to the track menu and click on show tempo track. Then this tempo track appears at the top of the screen showing you your tempo in real time, which you can then click within different points of the timeline and actually change the tempo from one part of your song to the next. And if you don't want your tempo to change really abruptly, simply add another point to the timeline and add a more gentle curve leading down into that tempo change. Next, did you know that you can change keys right in the middle of your song? To do it, you simply go back to the track menu, click on show transposition track, and again, you can click on different points and change key at will. And lastly, in the track menu, have you ever heard of the arrangement track? Well, of course, we're gonna go back to that track menu, hit show arrangement track, then hit this little plus button here, and a little bar pops up that says intro, which we can adjust the size of. Then if I hit that bar again, one comes up that says verse, and I can actually change the name of these by clicking the down arrow, hitting rename, and I could call this verse one. Then of course, I'll click this again, and now I can label my chorus. And what this does is it helps you stay organized when you're building out your project, and it's quite helpful. Need a place to write notes or lyrics as you go? Well, I love using the notepad feature. Click here and you can type in anything you want to. You can even change up the style or the size of the font. And this is a tool that I use all the time. And here's one last handy tip for just general project work. If you wanna know how long your song is, simply hit this drop down arrow here, you hit time and it shows you how long your song is. But if you still wanna see your beats and bars, then you can actually choose beats and time. And now you have bars and a grid mode here, but up top it gives you a real time reading of where the playhead is. Very handy. Next, I'm gonna shift gears and move to the area of editing. And this is the process of cleaning up those tracks that you just recorded. To start editing any software instrument performance, you can select the track or even just the region and hit E on your typing keyboard. And of course, we can move notes around, we can lengthen notes, shorten notes, delete notes, copy and paste notes, but that's not advanced stuff. The first advanced thing that I wanna show you is the quantize feature. So I go over to region, I hit time quantize. These are 16th notes, so I'm gonna hit 16th notes and watch what it does to every single note in the performance. Did you notice how it adjusted each and every note to the nearest 16th note, in effect, perfecting the timing of this performance? So number one, the quantize feature is a massive tool. And then number two, you can actually use the string slider. If you don't want it to be perfect, you just want it to be tight, well, you can pull that down. Or if you want perfection, then you bring it all the way up. However you use it, this is one of my absolute favorite editing tools in GarageBand, hands down. Next on the list for MIDI editing is the ability to adjust the velocity of any note within the performance. The velocity is basically how hard or intense you want a certain instrument to hit, or even how soft and subtle you want it to hit. So for example, if I turn this all the way down to one, you'll get a really soft bass sound. There's something beautiful about you. But now if I turn that same bass all the way up, you're gonna get a really strong punchy sound out of the bass. There's something beautiful about you. Now if we use the velocity feature in the context of a drum kit on say the snare, if I have it at 80, it's about a medium hit. But if I take it all the way up, you're gonna hear the crack and the intensity of the snare. Or on the other hand, if I take it way down, then it'll be really soft, almost like a drum roll. And another really useful way to use the velocity feature is to recognize when notes are way too quiet or way too loud within a MIDI performance. For instance, when I hit play on this performance, you'll hear that the top note doesn't really sound out. So when I go through and click on the different notes, I realize I'm averaging in the mid 90s and yet this note is down around 16. So I'll pull that one up to the mid 90s and now it'll fit in with the entire performance much better. Now there are other advanced MIDI editing tools like how to get the score or say even how to transpose your entire performance. But the one I wanna show you is how to automate a specific MIDI region. 
What I mean is that you can select any one region and automate an effect on only that region. First, we'll start by clicking the automation button. Then you'll go down to the menu and choose what effect you wanna automate. In this case, I'm gonna automate the modulation. I'll click within the timeline and create a couple of points and then I'll cause the modulation to go up as the time moves forward and it sounds like this. Pretty wild, right? And you can do it not only with modulation, you can do it with a ton of different effects. And what's cool is that the automation only lives on this specific region. It doesn't even carry over to other regions or go on your entire track. And on the MIDI region, you also get little bars to show you that there's an automation effect happening. So you can actually move around this piece anywhere in the performance and that automation will hold up. And they said GarageBand wasn't powerful. Next, let's look at editing audio. Before we get into the actual edit window, I wanna show you a couple tools here in the main work window. The first one is called the shave tool or the trim tool. If you hold your mouse up to the end of a region, you can actually shave off the edge of that region. Why is that helpful? Well, if you have a click or pop or some unwanted noise, you can actually shave that off and it's no longer audible. Then next, I wanna show you how to split a region. You can put the timeline wherever you want it, highlight that region and hit Command T and it splits that region into two. Now let's look inside the edit window by hitting E on our typing keyboard. The first two things I wanna show you live under the region tab. First is the reverse playback button. So I can select any piece of audio, hit reverse playback, and it turns it right around. This can be used for a number of cool effects. One example would be reversing a cymbal. Next, still in the region tab, I wanna show you the transpose feature, which allows you to transpose a performance any number of semitones up to 12 or minus 12. This can be helpful when you drop that loop or sample into your project and it's not quite fitting. There's something beautiful about you. Well, you can transpose it up or down until it fits the key of your song. There's something beautiful about you. And lastly, within audio editing, I wanna show you probably the most powerful tool, and that's the Flex Time tool, which allows you to adjust the timing of your guitar, vocal, or any audio performance. I'm gonna hit this little button right here, which is the Flex Time button. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so I can see each hit. And now you can see it gives me these lines. Every time a guitar hit happens, it gives me a line. And I can actually take these lines and move them around wherever I want to. But the key is we want them to line up with these little notches because these little notches are the metronome clicks. So if you look over here at bar 56, the drums and the bass are gonna hit right on this line, but this guitar part is just a hair early. So I'm gonna click here and drag it to right on time. And the same here, we're a little bit early. So I'm gonna click and drag it to where it's right on time. And now let's see how it lines up with our drum and bass groove. That grooves, right? And lastly, we're gonna shift gears into the area of mixing. So here's three advanced tips that you can use when you're mixing in GarageBand. To add effects to any track, we'll start by hitting B on our typing keyboard, which brings up the smart controls window or the mix window. And the first thing I wanna show you is master effects because I use these all the time and they're super easy to use. And those master effects live right down here. Right now, I have no echo and I have no reverb on the vocal and it sounds like this. There's something beautiful about you. But as I commonly do, I'm gonna add a bit of echo for that repeat and delay. Then I'm gonna add some master reverb for that luscious, spacious sound. And now let's give it a try. There's something beautiful about you. Now, the beauty of these master effects is that with two clicks, I've dramatically improved the sound of my vocal. And that's what I'm talking about, baby. But next on the list is the plugins that GarageBand offers. Did you know that GarageBand offers a massive library of all kinds of plugins? And with any of these plugins, you can select them, you can adjust their parameters any way you like, or even use a preset that they give you. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail of how to use all these plugins as that would require another 25 part video. But if you are interested in how I use these plugins to mix vocals in GarageBand, then check out my in-depth guide to mixing vocals in GarageBand. I'll put the link in the description. Then the last thing within mixing and our final advanced tip is how to use automation. 
You start by hitting A on your typing keyboard, which brings up what we call the automation lanes. And if you hit this menu here, you can choose any effect that you wanna automate. You can automate volume, pan, echo, reverb, and then a ton of other things like your EQ. Its most common use would actually be for volume adjustment. If you have a vocal that gets quiet in certain words or phrases, you can use the volume automation to actually adjust the curve up so you don't lose the end of the phrase. But in this case, I've used it to create an EQ filter which sounds like this. There's something beautiful about you. So that's all for our advanced tip list. I hope it was really, really helpful to you and you picked up at least one or maybe five things that you can add into your production process. And if you're someone who wants to make serious music in GarageBand, then that's what this channel is all about and I would highly encourage you to stick around. And be sure to check out some of the links in the description where I have some courses on going more in depth on GarageBand. So this is Dean from the studio signing out and I will catch you in another video.